Good morning, everyone. This is the study abroad presentation on uh, programs in Francophone Europe. We'll be getting started just momentarily. Just as a first note, um, we are joined by several of our colleagues who are in France, and I'll let them introduce themselves in a little moment. I also wanted to let everyone know that there is um, the question and answer option and you can go ahead at any time and put your questions there. They can be anonymous. That's not a problem. We typically will wait and toward, towards the end, though, to answer a lot of those. So don't feel discouraged if you don't get an answer immediately. Um, but like I said, you can go ahead and submit those questions at any time. So um, my name is Dr. Jason Sanderson. I am an assistant director here in the Office of Global Education and also teach uh, on occasion in the French department here at Georgetown. So uh, we are here this morning to talk about all the different types of programs that we have in Francophone Europe. So that's going to include France and Switzerland. Um, and we're going to be able to hear directly from our on-site coordinators yeah, in programs in Paris, Lyon, and Strasbourg as well. So if you have any specific questions, you're more than welcome to answer those as well. Um, so this, to get started though, we will go ahead and go over some of the basics um, and then we'll go into more details. So here you have a list of the programs and where they are all located. It looks like a lot and that's what we're happy to have, quite a few programs for students to choose from. You will notice that some of the programs have parenthetical references. So if you see full year or spring next to a program, that means that that is the only semester it is available. So it's important to know how exactly um, the different programs work with your individual schedules and timelines if you're looking at a program that may only be available in the spring or the full year if you are thinking of perhaps going just for the fall. So those are um, considerations you want to take, um, take in when you are looking at your different programs and researching your options. One of the main reasons that programs you may see on here are spring only are actually for calendar issues because a lot of the local fall calendars go into our early spring start. So that is why you will see that those programs would not be available for our fall because it would not be feasible to finish the program and start Georgetown in time. Um, you will see that there are a lot of programs on here listed as Sciences Po. That is because Georgetown, as, as everyone is well aware, is very uh, interested in political science and international relations. Uh, so between all of the SFS majors as well as the, the government major in the college, and um, increasingly the international business major in the MSC, we do want to make sure that students have ample opportunities and options in multiple places to study um, how politics, economics, and, and such intersect with society. And so that's where you're gonna see that we have the program, the Sciences Po programs in Paris, in Lyon, the university program in Strasbourg also includes the local Sciences Po as well as finally Sciences Po Bordeaux. So what I'll do now is just go over some of the requirements. As far as requirements go in general, if we're looking at the semester programs, the minimum GPA is going to be a 3.0 at the time of your application. Um, and if you're looking at any of the Sciences Po Paris programs, and that does include satellite campuses, they also have satellite campuses that we work with in Dijon, Nancy, and Poitiers. Students are expected to have a 3.3 at the time of application for those programs. Um, for students who may be transfer students and do not yet have a Georgetown GPA, then any decisions would be contingent on actually seeing what the Georgetown uh, GPA would be after that semester. And if you're looking at the summer programs, which we'll talk about as well, that's going to be a 2.7 for the overall GPA for a minimum. All the programs that we're going to be looking at here do have requirements for French, previous French knowledge. They do vary quite a bit from the, the language programs where students can come in with um, as little as one semester uh, up to uh, the Sciences Po Paris programs where students are expected to have, um, by the time they depart, having taken French 294, which is French for politics. We'll talk about those a little bit when we actually get into the individual programs. Passports are gonna be required for all programs. Um, so it is important that you have that um, already worked out. Uh, the process has been um, lengthened a little bit because of the, the, uh, the State Department closing down some of its operations recently because of the COVID crisis. So if you are in the process, if you do need to re uh, renew your passport, you want to make sure that you're getting on that fairly quickly so that you're not in the, the uncomfortable situation of having to try to track it down in order to apply for a visa. 
The visas will vary by country, so whether that be France, whether that be um, Switzerland, and also your country of citizenship. So those are things that we can discuss individually if students have particular concerns about having multiple citizenships or what have you and where to apply. Um, we can talk about those individual questions separately um, because it is a very much a case by case basis if students are not applying here in the US from, with a US passport. So Paris, of course, is what everyone automatically thinks of when you hear of France. And there's good reason. It's an amazing city. You can see some photos here. Um, we have three programs there. If you are looking for political science, the only place you find political science in France is at a Sciences Po. It is not a normally offered subject in most universities. Um, and within the Parisian system, if you are looking to do multiple subjects, it may be difficult to start, find a single university where they are all offered. So that's something that um, we should talk about uh, early on, if you do have a lot of different interests and or requirements, we should definitely look to see how those can be accommodated and where that would be best to do. Um, so if we look then on to our programs in Lyon, we have four programs actually in Lyon. There we go. Uh, we have two programs within Sciences Po Lyon. One is going to be the standard program and then there's going to be a year-long research program where students can actually um, gain a, a, a French diploma at the end um, in regional studies. So that's a very good option for students who are interested in pursuing regional studies and also interested whether those be European studies, African studies, Middle Eastern studies, and also interested in comparing the European, in this case French perspective, with the American perspective. Um, so it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to do that. Um, we also then do have Lyon 3, so the, the third university within the university system in Lyon. Um, and that program is going to be primarily more uh, social sciences and humanities for the most part. Um, and there's also an intensive language program that is a year-long program. Um, but it, the good thing about that program is that unlike a lot of other language programs, it's actually has different focus, uh, three different um, individual sub-programs that focus on different subjects. And so that allows students to actually focus not only their language skills on generic language ability, but also as applied to the particular subjects that they are taking. So whether that be what they call public life, which would be a, um, sort of administration and um, political science, whether that be um, uh, uh, performing arts and, um, and film, or also um, business, and economics. So it's a really good opportunity to be able to mix language um, studies with specific studies in a very specific field that then hybridize in the spring semester into taking classes alongside local. So it's a wonderful opportunity for students who are looking to do a little bit of both. In Strasbourg, we have two programs. So as I mentioned before, there's the University of Strasbourg, which does house the local Sciences Po, um, which is the largest single site university in the country, um, with approximately the last figure I saw was just shy of 57,000 students, so quite large, but ra still rather compact when it comes to campus, so it is very navigable. Part of that university is also an institute for learning um, French as a foreign language, which goes back to right after World War I when it was founded to allow incoming international students from other European countries to uh, work on their French skills to be able to go to the French university. Obviously now the, the dynamic and the student profile has changed quite a bit, um, but they still are uh, able to really work with a wide variety of levels of students um, when it comes to the language levels coming in and also what their backgrounds are. So the great thing about Strasbourg is because it is a comprehensive university, which is not the norm in most of France, most subjects are going to be offered there. And that does include theology, which everywhere else in France is not allowed to be taught in a public institution. <laughs> and so that is something that is very interesting because the separation of church and state, as we all like to talk about when it comes to France, actually is slightly different in Alsace because of the history of the region um, and at the time when those laws were originally signed. Um, so it's a very interesting place because of that, because it is really at the heart of Western Europe, 
Um, and you also do have then many EU institutions there. So if students are interested in international politics as opposed to French politics, it's also a wonderful opportunity to, um, to be able to see in person what is going on at the EU and perhaps even um, uh, sit in on a debate or two. There is another Sciences Po program that we have in Bordeaux. Um, it's very similarly structured to the Georgetown programs in that students take all their classes alongside local students and it's a relatively small program. So those all the programs I've talked about right now, anywhere from, uh, I would say, maximum per city, we're probably looking at 15 students in any given semester. Um, in the past recent semesters, it's been slightly lower than that. Um, Bordeaux is the same, except those numbers are not exclusively Georgetown students. Those are going to be Middlebury students because it is primarily a Middlebury program as well as other institutions, but it's structurally um, the same and very interesting for students to be able to, to see another regional capital of France and one that has also a very strong history um, with an external uh, focus as well. Nantes is where we have uh, another general program. That program is one that is run through our partner IES and they are able to accommodate slightly different levels depending on where students' interests fall. It is intended or was originally intended for business students. However, now we are able to entertain students from other subjects as well, but we do need to make sure that all of those are available. So students are interested in going to a slightly smaller city at about 400,000. Um, we can also talk about whether that makes sense for you when it comes to the individual programs that would be available there. Tour is going to be the, um, the center for both of our summer programs. So we have two faculty-led summer programs, both of which start in Tour. There's the plain Tour program, which is for um, over a little over a month, all in Tour. And then there's the, the Tour and Paris combination program, which starts the first two weeks in Tour and then spends the next month in Paris with a slightly different focus, um, looking at both business and uh, political entrepreneurship. Um, both programs are run by um, faculty from the French department and both programs have the opportunity for students to take the SFS proficiency um, exam on site. Uh, they do have different levels of required language, so it is important for students to, under, to familiarize themselves with that. Um, when it comes to the tool language program, it can accommodate uh, much lower levels of so students who are, you know, just beginning and looking to work on their skills. When you're looking at the Tour Plus Paris program, it's going to be looking at students who have already attained the advanced level. And finally, we have Geneva in Switzerland, where we have four highly focused programs. And so the programs in Switzerland all have a, um, a very uh, specific academic theme. Um, and all, as a result, do not have as much option when it comes to classes within that. So there are three programs through our partner that you may have seen at the beginning, SIT, which is School for International Training. Those all involve a month long independent study project at the end of the semester. Um, where students are able to put together a project and look at what they've learned in their content classes and take that out into the field and apply that to what they've been um, studying. So the three themes that they have there are going to be international relations and diplomacy, um, health policy, global health policy, as well as banking and finance. There is also a spring only program um, offered in conjunction with Boston University and Université Genève that has a built-in um, internship with the CERN. So the CERN is going to be, for those of you in the physics world, you already know most likely, it's where there's a super collider and students are able actually to conduct experiments using the information from that super collider. So it's very unique, um, but a very um, uh, interesting and very helpful pro um, program for students who are looking to do upper level programs in uh, graduate studies and maybe even doctoral studies later on in, um, in physics. So for finances, as far as those are concerned, students are of course always interested in knowing how exactly this is going to work out. So if you're looking at our website, we do have program budgets on our website. You're going to find fixed expenses and estimated expenses. Fixed expenses are going to be those that are billed to your student account by Georgetown. So that's going to be your tuition. It's going to be an international health insurance. And for some programs that may also include your room and board. Um, those are going to be fixed. Those are not going to vary. When you see those online, you're going to know what those are in advance. 
Um, when you're looking at the estimated expenses, however, those are going to be different depending on what you're looking to do, what your individual budget is, and what you, um, how you want to uh, explore your opportunities on the ground. So some of those expenses would include airfare. So obviously, if you're coming from one part of the country to, you know, to, to France or Switzerland, perhaps, you know, we've had students as far away as Alaska or a student who's coming from DC, that's going to be a different expense. And those are things that want, you do want to take into consideration. And for personal expenses, that's going to include, obviously, um, you know, your, your lunches and your entertainment expenses for the weekend and also your travel expenses. So those are going to be very different from one student to the next, depending on what you are able and what you're hoping to do while you are there. When we're looking at the summer programs, those do vary. So between the two programs that we've talked about here, they vary, but also between all the other summer programs. So there is not a standard tuition cost for those, tuition, for those summer programs. So do make sure if you are looking at different summer programs that you look at each one of those to get a sense of what the cost for that individual program would be because depending on the length of time that students are on the ground and also the amount of credit they will be earning, those costs do vary greatly. For financial aid, uh, the good news is for semester programs, it is completely portable. And that will also include covering, for instance, including in your package, your international travel to get to site. So you will see on our website, like I said, the program budget. So the program budget is what will serve as the, the basis for the recalculation of your aid for the semester or year that you would be going abroad. So it does take into account the additional expenses of living in, for instance, perhaps a Euro-based or Swiss franc-based um, economy and what that brings along with it when it comes to costs, as well as getting back and forth from there. Uh, when it comes to summer programs, however, those funding sources are going to be different and financial aid, Georgetown Financial Aid does not normally carry over for that, um, but there are scholarships typically available per program. So again, that's something you wanna make sure you are looking at our website for. So our website, I've talked about a couple times already, so I just wanna make sure since hopefully most of you uh, registered for, for this uh, virtual, um, fair on the website, but just to remind everyone what the website's address is, it is studyabroad.georgetown.edu, and every one of the programs that I just went over has their individual page. On those pages, you're going to find a finance tab, you're going to find an academics tab, you're going to find a housing tab, and that's going to explain those individual elements of the different programs. Um, so now what I will do is I'm going to turn um, the, the time over now to our, our local coordinators um, so that they can talk a little bit about the student experience on their programs and then we'll open it up for uh, the questions that you've asked and the, the new questions you may have. Bonjour à tous. Uh, I'm the Paris coordinator, well, uh, the, the Paris coordinator. It's not exactly this my title. Uh, my name is Emily Vine and I'm French. Um, so in Paris, as Jason Sanderson said, there are three programs. Uh, I'm only taking care of one of the programs, which is Paris uh, Sciences Po. Uh, the two other programs, so Coupa, uh, which is only uh, a spring, the spring semester program, and Sweet, uh, which is a full year program. So uh, the Paris Sciences Po program is. Um, is a school where you can um, well learn actually about uh, French economics, French uh, political systems. Uh, there's like many different courses you can take. Uh, it's one of the top uh, university. It's not exactly a university. It's like a school. Uh, it's one of the top uh, of the school in France. Um, students actually really like it when they go there. But as Jason said, uh, the French level is very high. So we ask students to already have a good level uh, of French uh, when they want to enter uh, Sciences Po Paris. As you can see on the map, uh, there is the Paris campus. It, it is the general program. So um, uh, I, am uh, I, I am living in Paris, but I'm also taking care of the Nancy, Dijon and Poitiers campus. So for those students who are going there, they are not alone. They also have a Georgetown um, uh, coordinator with them. 
but not with Le Havre and also I forgot Reims, the Reims uh, campus. But Le Havre and Menton, uh, I don't take care. Actually, there's no uh, Jason, please correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no um, there is no uh, Georgetown in Le Havre campus or Menton. That's right, that's correct. Correct. No, okay. Um, what the students really like at uh, Sciences Po Paris, uh, for the Sciences Po Paris program. Uh, they really like it because they can meet French students, which is the point, but also international students. And they really enjoy being with uh, different nationalities. So they can meet people, students like them, on an exchange program from all around the world. Um, the campus, the Sciences Po uh, buildings are actually in the center of Paris. And I mean, the area is really nice. It's like 10 minutes walking from uh, the most important museums and, um, and very nice sites. Um, so what can I say about it? Maybe you'll have a question you can ask at the end. Um, it's true that it's important to have a good level of French, but I also saw students who were not really comfortable but they were really thrilled. I mean, they were like, they try their best and they actually succeed. So don't think your level is not good enough. Just try, uh, do it, and I'm sure you will improve. Um, the classes are only taught in French. There are no English classes. You cannot take English classes, only French classes. And actually the students really like it because uh, compares to other students from other universities, they really improve. They have, at the end, a better French um, communication skills, writing skills, better than uh, all the others. This is what I can say about Sciences Po. Uh, about the cultural activity, Jason, maybe you can put on the next slide. So the cultural activities in Paris. So it's the students' choices. Uh, whether they decide, we decide together what they want to do. Uh, we can watch a soccer game, go to a theater, uh, we go to the restaurants, uh, explore hi uh, hidden Paris. I mean, hidden Paris, it's because most of the time students, they stay in the same district neighborhoods. Uh, so I try to, uh, I encourage them to visit like other places in Paris. Uh, we also went to a concert. I had students who really loved jazz music so we went to a uh, jazz concert and of course we do visit museums so there are so many activities we can do in paris so you will have to choose i helped you to choose if you want to come and uh can we go over to the next slide please yes this one so with the students also we have a weekend long um uh trip so also it's the choice of the students so i give them a small book at the beginning of the semester and in the book they have all the sites nice sites we can go to so we went as you can see on the map uh, with students we went to strasbourg to see susan uh, <laughs> we went to nice actually with the strasbourg program the students we went to montpellier bordeaux Ile de Ré, it's a small island, very nice. And we went to Les Pays de la Loire, which are basically all the, like the castle. And uh, so it was, uh, it, it's, it's a nice program. Uh, we do different activities during those days. And I think the students, they, they really like it. So it's nice to get out of Paris and to see regional capitals or like very small cities in France. I think that's it. Thank you. And so here yes, you have you that uh, email address. If you have any questions, you can email her. Um, mm -hmm. And you can also find that uh, through the individual page on OGE's website. And uh, there's a link to her profile in the directory where you can contact her as well. Thank you, Emily. Yes. So next up, we Thank have Valérie to talk about Lyon. Uh, first of all, so I, I'm Valerie, um, coordinating the Lyon program. I'm French, and um, I'm happy to be here with you to uh, uh, share and and hopefully give you uh, the taste of coming uh, to uh, to study in Lyon. Um, just a quick word on on, on the program. Um, typically, there's uh, we welcome a group of six to uh, uh, fifteen to twenty students uh, a year. 
uh, either uh, going to uh, Sciences Po, as, George, as Jason explained, or to uh, University Jean Moulin. Um, as Emily uh, said, uh, it's the same in Lyon, all courses are taught in French, uh, so it's uh, important that you uh, master the uh, the, the, the French and uh, you've got enough French proficiency to uh, to take courses and, and interact with uh, students and professors in French. Um, so you're mixed up um, in the classes with the French students, but uh, also get the opportunity to interact with international students from all around the world. Uh, to give you an example, Sciences Po, uh, Lyon uh, welcomes that. 300 international students a year, and that would be about the same at uh, University uh, Jean Moulin, uh, Lyon 3. Um, Lyon uh, is, is a city uh, that combines uh, several faces. Uh, we, we, we are um, a very old site uh, with a, a 2000 years uh, history, and depending on where you are going and wandering around, you'll uh, have a taste of uh, what the um, uh, ancient Gallo-Roman theatres uh, are like because uh, it's still actually uh, in place and uh, um, they may, they, we have the opportunity to attend uh, shows uh, in these uh, older theatres on, on the left, um, up on the slide. Um, so you can wander around in the uh, old city part that we called Vieux Lyon and this is a part of the city that students like uh, a lot with the middle age and kind of Italian Renaissance um, types of uh, buildings and, uh, and architecture. And then we uh, also have, uh, of course, in the city, um, contemporary parts of uh, district business and, and, and uh, shopping districts uh, where students like wandering around. So um, we, I would say, a lot of dualities and we have two um, two rivers, uh, two hills uh, in Lyon, one that is uh, known as the, the hill that prays, the other the hill that works. And so um, that's actually pretty nice uh, places to wonder. Maybe we can um, switch to the other slide with uh, what uh, students love most uh, in Lyon. Okay, no, okay, forgot about this one, sorry. Lyon <laughs> um, is, is a very renowned cultural city uh, with lots of um, festivals, international festivals, uh, kind of worldwide known, and um, you may have heard of some of them, uh, with the Festival Lumière, uh, that's a program of uh, um, build, that lights up all the, uh, the, 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 the buildings in the, in the city. Uh, we have a, lots of uh, uh, museums from fine arts to, uh, to um, modern art uh, museum and places, uh, an opera house, uh, three theaters. So um, lots of opportunities actually to, um, to enjoy uh, cultural activities uh, either on your own decision individually or as a group, as we'll see uh, on the next slide. So what, what I've uh, heard from the students, um, we will share experience and feedback uh, over the years. What they love most in Lyon would be just to walk along one of the two rivers uh, to reach the, the Parc de la Tête d'Or that we have downtown that also gets a zoo. Um, or uh, just go and wandering uh, to the new shopping district uh, where that you can also reach uh, with a boat um, that, uh, that runs along one of the rivers. Um, this would not be specific to Lyon, but um, enjoying uh, sitting outside on terrace, uh, restaurant coffee shops in the Vieux Lyon, uh, La Croix Rousse, uh, that's also a very typical uh, area of Lyon that would uh, uh, kind of look like San Francisco, you know, going up and down the hills and near the downtown city hall. And um, we um, are used to saying and are kind of proud to say that we are the capital of the gastronomy. Um, so lots of uh, restaurants to enjoy. 
And as I said, uh, original activities such as the celebration of the Beaujolais Nouveau, the Beaujolais being a, a wine that is produced in the Beaujolais region, uh, not far from, from Lyon. Um, and uh, there are many um, student uh, organizations that organize some uh, uh, trips to uh, Beaujeu, that's the capital of Beaujolais and um, music and, and uh, music festivals and the Festival Lumière, that's also the festival um, of the cinema, because we are also the capital of the cinema. And um, so that's for the uh, activities that students uh, enjoy practicing um, on an individual basis. And um, the typical program of activities that would um, have together um, would be, for example, to attend uh, with the Georgetown group a cours de cuisine, uh, where we, we cook, we have a kind of workshop where we cook together with a French chef, and then we um, end the, um, the, the, uh, the evening together tasting uh, what we've cooked, and students really uh, love that a lot, and they um, uh, also enjoy um, re, uh, doing the, retrying the recipes either with their host families um, in Lyon or uh, with their um, own families uh, when they come back. Uh, we usually do a, a ski trip, uh, that's in the winter time, uh, of course, where we enjoy a weekend in the Alps, uh, either skiing or hiking together. And for some of them, um, we can also do both. Uh, it's a tasting typical uh, food uh, of the mountains. Um, they also like, and we have a dinner in a typical um, restaurant uh, with uh, serving Lyonnaise food, and uh, we call this restaurant Bouchon. And um, the groups uh, also have liked um, and have asked uh, me to organize a, a a restaurant time in one of the uh, restaurants of the famous chef Paul Bocuse that you may uh, certainly have heard of. And we um, also uh, choose uh, together to go either to a, a theatre to, uh, to, to see and watch a, a theatre play or show uh, at the Maison de la Danse for a dance exhibition or sometimes also at the Opera House. And um, we also have the opportunity, if they are fans, uh, part of the group or not, to uh, go uh, watch a, a football match, um, soccer, uh, because there's a, this now a huge stadium in Lyon that's been built to, uh, to welcome this, um, these games. Um, and I think that's about it. So and one, one thing, of course, to note, Valérie, was that that is where the uh, American uh, female team played last summer against the Netherlands. Yeah, you, 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 you're right. You're right. Okay, I great. think that's uh, about it. Don't hesitate uh, to reach me out if you have any uh, questions or uh, would like some more information. Okay, Thank great. you. Thank you very much. And now, last but most certainly not least, we're going to talk about Strasbourg and what students uh, like to like to do when they're there. Okay, I'm Susan Witkowski. I'm um, Franco-American, and I think I picked uh, five things, five reasons students love Strasbourg, and one of the reasons it's an absolutely beautiful city, and I think the students really enjoy that. Um, they discover the old town, which you can see the picture there. It's called La Petite France. Uh, the inner city is surrounded by canals and there are lots of very nice uh, ca um, uh, cafes and restaurants uh, that students can uh, enjoy and uh, the cathedral area is very nice too. Next slide. Um, Strasbourg is the most bikeable city in uh, France. It has a ton of bike paths all over the city and the new mayor of Strasbourg is green from the uh, Ecology movement and so they'll be creating even more bike paths. Uh, if you notice there uh, the, with the green baskets, those are um, bikes that students rent or anyone can rent from the city and they're very reasonable. You might notice that people don't have helmets on but the Georgetown program provides students with helmets students often lead, lead them. Um, 
you can ride your bike to Germany, just 10 miles away. Um, Strasbourg is also very well suited uh, in the heart of Europe uh, for interesting travel. You know, it's only about uh, one hour and 50 minutes to Paris. It's uh, not far from a lot of major European, uh, um, European uh, cities, so students uh, can take advantage of that. And the Strasbourg program also provides a uh, train, pa uh, train reduction card. So you can take advantage of uh, more reasonable prices. Okay. Uh, Strasbourg is very international as the seat of the Council of Europe, the European Parliament, and the Court of Human Rights. Uh, often Sciences Po Strasbourg or the language program, they organize visits um, to these, um, the Council of Europe or the Parliament or the Court of Human Rights. And you can, the students can go there on their own too. There's also, they have open house once a year usually too. Thank you. Ah, Strasbourg is very well known as the uh, capital, uh, capital de Noël. So we have the Christmas market with the tallest uh, Christmas tree in France. Uh, it begins the end of November and it actually, uh, it, it ends, the Christmas market officially ends in, um, at, uh, in early January, but it actually continues um, spring semester students can get a tail end because they leave all the lights on for the uh, January uh, sales. And so you can, uh, you get kind of a taste of it a bit. Thank you. Uh, the activities program, uh, just like in, in Paris and Lyon, the students have a choice of things that they can do. We usually go to Southern France. Um, so you can see the I love Nice uh, picture. Sometimes we go to Aix-en-Provence. Uh, sometimes students choose to go to um, to Brussels also. So that's an option. There is a cooking class uh, and we usually do two excursions per semester in the local area and we usually don't do those with, uh, but they, we go by bus and they're with other um, American programs. And so we're able to hire a, a pretty large bus and we visit like the wine road and different castles in the area and things like that. The, just uh, those are, are day trips. In addition to that, we go to the, the students kind of work out in the beginning of the semester the things they want to do like a soccer game, um, museums. Um, there's also a joker option where they have um, I, I can't remember the exact amount of it. Maybe it's 50 euros or I, I can't remember where they can go see something on their own. They can choose to go to ballet or opera or something else that they want to do, um, not necessarily with the whole group. Okay. There we go. And so, contact me if you have any questions. So this is the time now that we have a few minutes left to go over the questions that have been submitted. Um, and uh, we're going to have, I believe, Susan or, oh, here we go, Melissa's already submitted one. Um, if I really want to improve my French, what program or city, city should I go to? Um, that is going to be really dependent on what your hopes are and how long you're going to be there. Honestly, um, if you're only going for a semester, um, despite the attraction of Paris, Paris is a very difficult city to navigate linguistically if you're not, if you don't already have a solid uh, foundation in French. Beyond that, you're going to find any city in France gives you ample opportunity to learn and work on your French skills. Um, that's the one very, very good thing about having a, a society that is so enamored with its own language and its own history is that you will be able to use it in any place really, um, as long as you are willing to practice and also willing to learn. That's the other thing that sometimes I think we as Americans have difficulty appreciating is sometimes the French uh, tendency to correct us and tell us the right way. Um, that's actually helping us learn. Um, and that's one of the things that is, once you learn to appreciate that and you learn the new ways of saying things or quote unquote, the right way of saying things, it's really going to be um, an opportunity to really um, 
the to really work on your language skills and use them as you would like and really polish them how you would like. Um, the there's another question that's come in about housing. What is that? What is that like? And that's a really good question. All of the programs do um, have homestay housing, and maybe we could hear from or one or two of the uh, the local coordinators to say, you know, what the process is for finding families and what students could expect in a typical home and that sort of thing. Sure, Susan, please. Okay, um, uh, all the students live in house families and that's really the kind of the window to the culture for the students when they live with a family. I think it's it's really where the interaction is. The, the host families love it when the students ask questions and are interested. They ask, the, the French families ask a lot of questions themselves. The students in Strasbourg, I don't know if it's, I think it's similar in Lyon, I'm not sure. They have um, four evening meals a week with the, with, the, with the host families and breakfast every day. Um, the host families are, are um, you know, they're willing to adapt to student uh, needs as far as vegetarian or if students have certain health needs or some or something like that um, most of the families um, the students always have their own room they don't share a room um, they don't ha usually have their own bathroom that's pretty unusual um, they usually share that with the family uh, there are a couple places where the organization is a little more um, independent, where the student might have a room in a chambre de bonne, you know, it might be on a different floor or outside of the family apartment. And usually I reserve those for students who kind of indicate that they'd like something a little more independent. Great, anything else you would like to add, Valérie? No, it's, it's pretty much the, yeah, the, the, the same as uh, Susan just explained. Uh, uh, the, um, I think being living with the host family is a real great opportunity getting, you know, the sense of all this, uh, I mean, the French culture in, on, in, on an informal basis, you get, you get a lot sharing with the, with the, the families and, and um, uh, what we do is that um, you, sh you have to, um, when you apply, you have to fill out a housing questionnaire. Um, and then with uh, explaining about your um, center of interest, what you like most, uh, what you don't like, what you, you don't want, uh, if you have any uh, specific requirements or, or any specific diet, etc. And then we, um, as coordinators, try to, uh, you know, have the best match with the, with the host families that we know and, and, and the students' uh, expectations. Um, and I think that's, yeah, that's about it. That I had to the other thing that I would um, just like to bring, I mean, and it's it's relatively similar in, in Paris, with the exception that we use uh, an external agency in Paris to find the homestays. Um, yes. the, uh, the one thing I do want to mention that I did not mention earlier is that there is a slightly different timeline if students are looking at Sciences Po Paris as an option. Students should keep in mind that they are to apply in the fall semester of their sophomore year for any point in time of their junior year. So that would be fall, spring, or the full year. And that is because we need to evaluate all applicants at the same time because of uh, limited numbers for exchange places between our two institutions. Um, the, the final deadline for that is always the first week of December but there are multiple interim deadlines ahead of time. So if you are a sophomore and thinking about Sciences Po Paris, please do um, look at the webpage and get a sense of when those um, different timelines will be. Some of them will be starting um, at the end of this month and beginning of next month for the first language exam. Um, and then there'll be interviews about halfway between then and the final deadline. Um, other than that, though, all of the other programs, including the summer programs, will have their deadline the semester before you are looking to go. So if you're looking to go either in the summer to one of the tour programs, uh, tour or tour for tour in Paris, or if you're looking to do any of the fall or full year programs, those would all be early on in the spring semester. And if you're looking to go in the spring semester, then those, pro those applications, except for Sciences Po Paris programs, would then be uh, in the beginning of the fall semester. So effectively, usually about four months before you would be leaving. Um, any other questions? So I do wanna just remind everyone that um, we do have uh, the, the sessions tomorrow for students who may have questions they are, weren't able to ask today. 
Um, so those start at 11 a.m. and they go throughout the day. Um, also, this recording, if you joined us a little bit later, will be uploaded to our website in about two weeks' time. So you can go back and look at it. You have all the contact information for our three coordinators on those individual slides. But like I said, also within their respective pages on the OGE website, you also have the links to their contact info as well. Um, my information is also on the OGE website. So feel free to ask questions at any point in time during the process. If you're considering different programs, if you're weighing different options, we're more than happy to walk you through that. Um, okay. Oh. We do have uh, one last question, which was first year students, what can you do to set yourself up to go to France for junior year? Um, and that's a really good question. The first thing to make sure is in that you're, you're in the appropriate French class. So if you are only starting off French in your first year in the non-intensive track, you're going to most likely have to be able to do something in over the summer to make up for that because you do need to have, unless you're looking to do the language program, which like I said, those language programs can accommodate a variety of levels. The general expectation is that you have through 102 or 112, which would be one of the in, in advanced two levels. So you do want to make sure that you're looking into that ahead of time. Um, if you, uh, same holds, if you are a physics student and are interested in the Geneva program, you want to make sure that you have the appropriate French level and the appropriate physics level to be able to go on that program. Speaking with your dean, um, speaking with uh, folks in our office, whether that be me or a peer advisor, as to when the application cycles were, will open and when the deadlines will be due for your individual cycle. All those are, are great places to start, but when in doubt, visit our website. So you will see that on our website, we always talk about you know, when the applications are going to be. Um, we do only open one application cycle at a time, however. So if you are interested in applying down the road for the summer or fall, those are not quite yet open. Those were not open for a few weeks. Um, but because we are working with students who are looking to go in this coming spring, but beyond that, it's a relatively straightforward process. So I'd like to thank everyone for their attention this morning. Hopefully this was informative for you. And if you have any follow-up questions, please do not hesitate to email or set up appointments with one of us and we can go through any of the, the things that are not clear to you. Thank you so much. Bienvenue en France bientôt. Au revoir. Au revoir.